Fiori, how serious do you think is the problem or do you know is the problem of human trafficking and exploitation in the fashion business? Yes, unfortunately, it's, um, it, it's, a, it's a very serious, uh, the correlation is positive and very strong among fashion industry and the trafficking of human beings or else called uh, modern slavery. Uh, we have 40.3 million slaves uh, in the globe right now. We have the biggest number of slaves that humanity ever had in absolute numbers. Um, the biggest um, in modern uh, slavery, in labor trafficking, we have 25 million people. And the second industry where these people are being uh, trafficked is the fashion industry, with 72% of them being women and girls. One out of four is a child, uh, and the other is uh, age of uh, children that uh, get into slavery is uh, 12 years old. But you go back, I mean, in SOFA right now, we have uh, tailors that uh, they are 21 years old, are asylum seeking refugees, and they say that they have 15 years of experience, wow. which is child traffic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is Corona, um, in your opinion, making things worse? So, uh, Corona has two sides. Uh, uh, the virus, unfortunately, has, uh, has ended, unfortunately, unfortunately, has ended in, uh, in the slowdown of consumption. But this, of course, uh, it's, been, um, it's, it, it, it's been said, you know, we will find out, of course, when everything finishes, but uh, there are accusations that brands have now uh, stopped production, uh, but they didn't pay out uh, the, the factories mm -hmm. that are in the production countries and these factories now don't have the money to pay their workforce as they had been producing and they are forced on one hand to burn uh, the merchandising because it's branded and they cannot do anything with that and secondly not to pay the workers uh, and right now uh, we're, we're seeing that thousands of workers are being uh, fired or left without a work and of course, we refer to people that had no insurance. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and, you know, we need to demand a collective action for these uh, workers. Uh, on the other side, uh, this whole slowdown for us consumers, the global consumer, is a very good opportunity to like, identify the symbols out there and see how uh, the, the planet uh, is actually uh, in pain and uh, and what we're doing I mean uh, we're trying to combat the virus but then we have also the climate change uh, disaster that's coming and has already hit us on very many levels so it's a very good opportunity right now for all of us uh, to like reflect on our behavior and make the connection among our everyday work and life fashion choices choices in garments and textile and on the other hand, in climate change crisis and in crisis like this one. Yeah, you speak about our habit of over-consuming. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. And as brands of uh, not taking seriously and not giving uh, respect to our producers and suppliers then and uh, squeezing them, fortunately for brands and big retailers to not know where uh, their uh, production is being made and in other which circumstances, which is what we call, and we try as Fashion Revolution uh, to raise through the Fashion Transparency Index uh, yearly uh, research. I know that you are a very optimistic person. Do you think that the fashion industry kind of um, is learning from this lesson, is going to change also fundamentally? You know, the, the last three years, there has been an enormous change in the fashion industry. And I hear that in the OECD uh, fora that I go in Paris and in, uh, and in, uh, um, in the garment and footwear uh, you know, annual diligence. I hear them in, uh, in everywhere I'm traveling with the people that I talk to. Uh, and labels were actually being mobilized and there were um, forums between workers in production countries, the, their trade unions, uh, the, the factory owners and big labels. Um, so I don't think that this will now stop. 
uh, consumers have been resisting. I mean, the, the consumer survey in 2018 of uh, a fashion revolution in five countries on ages from 16 to uh, 70, they showed that one in three uh, consumers uh, cared about causes to the environment and uh, human rights when buying a garment. And actually 85% of them were asking for grants to take action on global uh, poverty and on, uh, on the environment uh, implications. Uh, so I don't think that this will stop. I think on the contrary, that we will see people now being um, transformed into higher levels of consciousness. And you will see that people now uh, will realize their power and also their responsibility. And I think that uh, behavior will now change, pressure will change, and brands, I mean, we had for, from Google, for example, now yesterday, I think I saw uh, that they, they, they don't support anymore all the brands and labels and companies that are uh, not uh, green or are running campaigns that ignore green policies. So I think this is getting even stronger. Okay, so there is some hope. Let's also talk about Sofa. You are the founder of the Social Fashion Factory. Where do you stand with Sofa right now? Yes, uh, Social Fashion Factory is a factory uh, where, that provides uh, social inclusion and empowerment to women survivor victims of human trafficking and asylum seeker refugees that uh, live in Athens. Um, they're being trained or integrated into work directly. So we, we provide vocational training to sewing uh, and fashion design on real orders because we haven't been funded till now. So we're only using organic growth from the orders that we get. So we're not charity. Uh, we don't uh, produce products and then try to find somewhere uh, to sell. But uh, we uh, do uh, training and we open the machines when we receive an order. An order comes from sustainable designers globally, uh, from festivals like the Roskilde Festival now uh, that we're talking to in Denmark. Um, and uh, because we're a training center, we were forced to stop uh, working now because of okay. restrictions so you, the uh, for a short right period. Uh, but we continue because all the orders are continuing. Uh, so we continue with uh, all the work that can be done remotely. Uh, design, pattern making, uh, the design of the printings, the silk screen, man handmade prints. Um, and we go on with taking orders and sampling. Uh, but uh, the, the training has uh, stopped uh, for now, for a month. In Greece, we're doing very well with the virus. I don't know if, you're, if you've heard, we're like a case study, a global case study. Fortunately, people have behaved very well and the, the government has taken action from like day one and people stay home and there is a very slow so we have about four deaths daily which is very slow uh, because we don't have a good health system and we, we couldn't have everybody you know uh, this uh, this what's happening in Italy and Spain mm -hmm. everybody going to the hospitals at the same time yeah yeah that's a problem um, so hopefully uh, first of May will slowly be able to move a little more. Fiori, thank you very much for having time for us. All the best to you and have, yeah, have a good time in Corona times and hope to see you soon at one of the next editions um, at Green Style. Thank you very much. Looking forward to it.